Do you remember your first set of keys? Maybe it was to the house. Your parents gave you a set of keys so you could come and go after ball practice. Or maybe it was to a car. When I graduated high school and I was going off to college, my mom and dad graciously provided me with a car. It was a Mustang II Ghia, a Ford Mustang. Or maybe it was keys entrusted to you at your workplace. When I had graduated college, I remember beginning my full-time preaching at the Smithville Church of Christ over uh, on Center Hill Lake in Smithville, Tennessee. The church building is on Armory Drive, and those good people, those wonderful elders, entrusted me with a set of keys, which I promptly lost, not once, <laughs> but twice. The first time was embarrassing. The second time was <laughs> humiliating. It was mortifying, but I had much to learn about the value of keys because keys give you access. And if you don't have those keys, you can't get in to do your work, to serve and to bless others. You want to get in your car? You want to get in the house? You want to get into the workplace? You want access? What do you need? Keys. And that reminds me of the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 11. 2 Peter 1, 11, we're seeing the conclusion of the eight qualities that Peter has presented that make you effective and fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what we've seen this month is he's given us a warning and a command, and now tonight we're going to see a promise. Verse 9, a warning. Verse 10, a command. Verse 11, a promise. Well, first of all, we saw the warning. For whoever lacks these qualities, these eight qualities that Peter has enumerated, is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he is cleansed from his former sins. If you're blind, what's going to happen? You'll be in the dark and you'll stumble and you'll fall spiritually. You don't want to be spiritually blind. So then came the command. Therefore, because I don't want to fall, I don't want to be blind. Brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these things, you will never fall. I don't want to be lacking or deficient in these things. I want to practice these things with deliberate and diligent practice. Life is serious. And we need to develop our character by following the teachings and emulating the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be diligent, deliberate in practicing these qualities. There are blessings and benefits when you do. So number one, we saw the warning. Number two, we see the command that if we do this, it will authenticate our relationship with God the third thing is a promise. For in this way, you will be richly provided, what? An entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An entrance, an entrance. You'll have access. You remember that Jesus told the apostles that he was giving them the keys of the kingdom that grant access to God and to heaven. Well, what, what are the keys of the kingdom? That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is faith and repentance and confession and baptism that makes it possible for us to access the blood of Christ and the benefits that come from his death, burial, and resurrection, which include not only salvation from past sin, but sanctification and an inheritance in heaven. Entrance into heaven. So we have those keys for ourselves, but we have those keys so that we can help others know how they can have this wonderful relationship with God. He says it will be richly provided. And when I hear the word rich, I think about the rich man from Luke 16. He did not have entrance into the heavenly kingdom. There was a great gulf between him and Lazarus. 
Go with me over to the book of Luke. Let's look at chapter 16, beginning in verse 19. In our world, people equate riches with righteousness. That is not necessarily true. Wealth with wisdom, that is not always the case. He says, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day, every single day. And at his gate was laid, in contrast, a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who, who was so hungry he desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, listen to this humiliation. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. Well, when death came, there was a reversal of their fortunes. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. But the rich man also died and was buried. And he did not awake in glory, but in Hades. And being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the, the tip, the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in these flames. Well, Abraham said, child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed the uncrossable chasm in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. No entrance. It's a terrible thing to wake up after death, five minutes after death, and then to realize you'd made some poor choices. To awaken anguish, in torment, in flame. On the other hand, here is Lazarus, carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. You don't want to wait five minutes after your death to find out what your destiny is. Peter says that if these qualities are yours, if they're not lacking, if you're practicing them diligently, you can know that you have entrance into the heavenly kingdom. So the key is to make your decisions every day based on where you want to spend eternity. Through obedience to the gospel, I can be a part of the church, God's kingdom on earth, but being a part of the eternal kingdom after this world and this life is over and the judgment occurs, where will I be? These qualities or what you're going to want to be practicing in your life here and now in order to be blessed eternally. The rich man was lacking in brotherly affection, was lacking in self-control, was lacking in virtue, was lacking in love, and he, he did not have entrance into heaven. But you can you're still alive. You can start making your daily choices based on how to please God, bless your fellow man, and to grow your character rather than indulge your flesh. It's up to you. In the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, it talks about entrance into heaven. It's a judgment scene. And in Matthew chapter 25, it describes that scene. It says in verse 31, when the son of man comes in his glory, the second coming of Jesus Christ and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne and before him will be gathered all the nations. That means you and me. And he will separate people one from another, just as Lazarus and, and, and just as the rich man ended up in different locations there will be a final judgment and there will be a separation just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come, 
you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But how? How can that be? He says, because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was, uh, I, I, I was sick. I was a stranger. I was in prison. I, I was in need. You saw my need and you, you came and loved me and served me and blessed me. What he's talking about is practicing the qualities that Peter mentioned. And so we can have entrance into the eternal kingdom if we live for heaven rather than earth and if we live for God rather than self. I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity, the knowledge, the information, and the choice to determine our destiny while there's still time the rich man could not alter his, but today you and I can be assured that we have been richly provided entrance into the unshakable kingdom of God. Hope you enjoy your discussions tonight. God bless. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high